Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Jake Abdenor, kinesiologist and 49 marathoner. I ran a PR like like a week, two weeks ago. I, I feel like I can run faster, but I didn't run faster, but it's... All right, so since it's May and the beginning of spring, I thought it'd be a good time to talk about what clothes you can wear for the different seasons to battle the different temperatures. I know it doesn't make any sense. Like I was gonna make this in December, but then I didn't, and it'll come back again next season. So hopefully like in the search results, people will be like, oh, what do I wear in the winter when it's really cold? So by the end of this video, I hope you guys leave today kind of knowing exactly what would be a good idea to wear for different temperature levels and conditions. So anything from like super cold to super hot. All right, so since it's May, I might as well start with the coldest temperatures. What should you wear when it's super duper freezing out? Hi, I'm cold temperature running Jay. So for me personally, this is pretty much as bundled up as I will ever get uh, for running outdoors. This is usually about 20 degrees and below, that's Fahrenheit. In Celsius, that's this temperature. So anywhere from like zero degrees Fahrenheit up to 20, I'll pretty much be dressed like this. I have a hat to keep the body heat in to protect the ears because you lose about 10 to 15% of your body heat through your head and also your ears because the, the skin's really thin here. I always have gloves on for sure. Yeah. I'll be wearing this coat, that coat, this coat. This is like a neoprene. It's really nice. Which is also water kind of proof and also wind proof and like snow resistant proof. So the idea is that I can wear this and underneath I'll have like a shirt or something. And I'm always wearing running tights at this temperature. That's right. These specific tights are fantastic. I found them this past winter. I was replacing ones I'd had for about uh, 10 years. I got them when I was like 16. <sighs> These have a bit of a insulation on the inside. It's thermal layering on the inside. They're really comfortable, fantastic. Adidas. Also something to think about, if it's going to be snowing outside, it might be a good idea to wear sunglasses. I know it seems a little crazy like wearing sunglasses if it's like during the winter and it's not really sunny but the sun reflects off of the snow and can go into your eyes. Yeah it's just like if you're on the water it's the same idea you don't want to like tense your face up when you're running because it steals blood flow to the face. Quick side note, sorry. A question you might have, Jake what do you wear underneath of these things? So I would say I would wear under so I would for sure wear something. I wouldn't go free. Some kind of underwear. You could do compression underwear. I don't think it'd be relevant to wear a jock strap. But just be careful because sometimes if it's if the because these are these are tight pants. If there's like friction in bad areas, that could be a problem. So think about maybe using Vaseline depending on the Okay, you got it. If I'm running in temperatures colder than zero degrees Fahrenheit, which I haven't done since I was in college when I was at Penn State. And a few times it would be like negative 10, negative five. Again, Celsius is a like great right here. Maybe then I would wear another additional light coat over top of this. But even then, I mean, it usually doesn't stay temperatures like that all day, throughout the day. Maybe at night it'll dip down to that. But during the day, it's probably a better idea to get out and run then. At a certain point, if it's too cold, it might be better to kind of move the workout indoors or you could bundle up and like be really kind of dressed for the elements, but then also think about how you might kind of, your sweat response. So if you start sweating a lot when you're running, the sweat freezes and then you get like more cold and it's kind of, yeah, it's bad. Next up, and it goes up a little higher, usually between 20 degrees and 30 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll wear this. It's pretty much the exact same thing as you saw, except I don't have my lovely little neoprene jacket on here. Um, the reason this is kind of optional in that temperature range is because, well, for me personally, um, I heat up pretty quick. And you, you'll notice for yourself too, usually after about 800 meters, you know, five minutes or so of just jogging, just kind of moving around a bit, your body temperature will increase. And if you're wearing too much, again, that sweat response, that sweat will start to freeze a bit. Um, and it won't really be necessary. Depend, depending if you're moving at like a normal intensity. If you're moving at a very low, low, low intensity, uh, then you probably won't sweat as much as if, uh, if at all, uh, depending on, you know, kind of how cold it is. So basically for me, it's like, if it's gonna be under 20, for sure I'll wear the coat and the hat and the gloves and the pants and everything. If it's 20 to 30, this is optional, depending on if it's rainy, depending on if it's windy, but usually I don't really do it. Next up, between temperatures of 30 degrees Fahrenheit and 40 degrees Fahrenheit Celsius, it'll look like this. So again, almost kind of the same thing, optional gloves or optional hat. It depends on the temperature 
range. Usually if it's starting to 40 degrees, probably like I'll start with the hat, but then take it off and stick it in my, my pants later on. So maybe I'll start with the hat, 10 or 15 minutes later, I'll put it in the pants. I usually wear gloves a bit, because this is another place obviously where you lose body heat a lot from. Obviously usually I'm still wearing pants, and I'll pretty much wear pants until I need to take the gloves off, which is the next temperature range. So now we're at 40 to 50 degrees. 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, it's too hot to wear thermal pants. Uh, after a few minutes, like it might feel nice to start with them, but honestly after a few minutes for me, it's just, it's just too much and you're sweating too much. So I'll usually start with these sexy shorts Bing. and then I'll have my hat and my gloves on, but then after a few minutes, usually I'll be kind of taking one or two of them off and sticking them in my pants. You're noticing a theme here is that uh, how, the temperature that it feels for you when you start or for like a normal person kind of walking around the day will not feel the same after about 10 minutes of running or so. I, like people ask me all the time, like, are you crazy? You must be freezing because you're wearing such and such. And I'm like, dude, I've been running for five miles. I can guarantee my core temperature is a bit higher than yours. So think about kind of starting off, you know, staying comfortable. It might be a little, like, might be a little chilly at first, but then after a few minutes, you can start to kind of remove layers. All right, so now the next temperature range, personally, oh my favorite temperature range, about 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about right, doop, right there in Celsius. So I'm sure you can notice that I might be naked a bit of the time. One week, one and a half weeks, post-marathon gut. I've just been eating like so much food. Look at all this food. <laughs> I'm expecting soon. And so this is kind of where like, I'm not taking a hat, I'm not taking gloves. I might start with a shirt, but within 10 minutes, there's really no need to wear a shirt. Honestly, anything above 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 50, 60s, I'm not, I'm like totally just naked because I don't know, I like to feel free. But also I'm gonna be sweating like a bit more, you know, between like 50, 60, 70 degrees Fahrenheit than I will be at lower temperatures. But there's usually no reason for me to wear a shirt unless like I'm gonna need to like go to the store afterward or maybe I'm like meeting somebody or, you know, there, I like, I like from a societal perspective, I'll need to have a shirt. But dude, if I'm running for like time and for distance for like 10 miles, 12 miles, like and I'm cruising along, I don't care if I have a shirt on or not because of the temperature, like I won't, it won't make any difference to be totally honest at all. My core temperature between wearing this tiny little thin shirt and not wearing the tiny little thin shirt, it's, it's the same. Also, dude, you save on like laundry like so much. If you get to the point where you're running twice a day and it's like during the summer, that's two pairs of shirts, two pairs of shorts every day that you have to like kind of I like plan for or wash for and like it just becomes like a dude I don't have time for that. Also another thing to consider if you're running naked you might get some stairs which is great and the best way to take advantage of that is to wear the most obnoxious colors you possibly can because then everyone will know you're legit. So here we have my favorite so great also my second favorite awesome right really good so Also these, so short shorts, naked, awesome, summer, getting tan, running fast, fantastic. That's what it's all about. Another quick side note, sorry. You could also do half tights, which is what these are. They're compression-y and tight and stuff, and I would, I would wear underwear underneath of them. Don't be one of those guys. But then it goes into the great debate of what is better, short shorts or half tights. Eh. These can be great to wear like to the gym after a run or to wear for a run after the gym or in a social setting where you just don't feel comfortable sitting in short shorts. But I mean, if you can't sit in Starbucks with short shorts, then where the hell else can you sit with them on? And I urge you, if you're feeling self-conscious about running naked, I don't know, for me, when I'm running, I'm in my own world kind of anyways. Uh, it's really irrelevant what somebody else thinks about like their idea of my body running or my, it's my own body. It's not your body. It's not their body. It's, it's mine, right? The people are like, well, you know, I said you were doing it's inappropriate or it's this or it's that. It's like, well, dude, when you're getting to the point where you're running like 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 miles a week, <laughs> come back to me and tell me about like kind of what you think people should and shouldn't wear when they're running. Okay, thanks, bye. Consideration when it's raining is to wear a hat, which might seem kind of weird to you, like if it's raining, why do you wear a hat? The idea is that you wear it 
forwards so that as you're running, the rain hits the top of the bill of the hat. And again, as you get on your face, you squint your face up like this. So you'll notice people if they're running in like, like legit races, they'll probably people will be like wearing a hat. You could look at the 2000, 16 Olympics and see a lot of people wearing hats for this reason. Whatever you can do to keep the blood flow going to your legs and your working muscles and not to kind of be stolen. So your hat going forward like this and it'll kind of block the rain. It's really nice, I promise. Three quick considerations when exercising in cold temperatures. One is that your core temperature will actually drop below baseline after you finish exercising. So basically like there's a window of 10 to 15 minutes post exercise where if your core temperature is normally at this, Obviously when you're exercising, it'll elevate, right? But after exercise, it'll drop to below baseline, which might explain why after you guys might notice, like after you guys finish exercising, maybe within 10 or 15 or 30 minutes, you actually start to get really cold. So this is like a thermoregulatory thermo response because when you start to exercise, your temperature increases, your body doesn't want it to get too high. So it starts to do all the things that it does to downregulate, like sweating and all that good stuff. Well, this kind of continues even if you stop and it continues for a little while. So usually like, uh, I, th I think it's about one hour post exercise, this response might be there. So just be wary after you finish exercising, especially if you finish exercising in a cold climate, make sure you get warm or put a hat on or get dry, you know, set yourself up to um, be safe about it. If it's winter time, I would not finish a run and then stay outside for a prolonged period of time after you finish exercising because your core temperature will plummet. Second consideration, the reason to wear gloves and to wear a hat and to wear pants and obviously things on your feet is because no matter what, your body will fight to keep your core warm. So you know people who get frostbite like climbing Everest and stuff. Your body will sacrifice its extremities, fingertips, toes, ears, nose first in every attempt to keep your core uh, warm because it's like where your vital organs are. Your body will actually shunt blood flow away from these extremities to keep this stuff safe. So that's why please, in a, in a cold climate, wear gloves, wear things to protect your ears, wear a hat to keep your body temp in, make sure your toes aren't getting too wet because if it gets wet and it freezes, that's bad, right? Um, so just kind of be wary, think about these things when you're running. Um, sometimes if you're running in like snow and ice and stuff, it's fun, but if your toes are getting wet, you know, after an hour or two hours, and if it's like zero degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, that could be a problem for your toes. Like I've had a few occasions where my toes were like a little frostbitten. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Sorry it got a little dark. I had to turn the ISO up a little bit. I hope this was somewhat informative to you. I know it's hot kind of in the Northern Hemisphere. It's starting to get hot. So probably the last two will be most relevant to you in terms of outfits and stuff. But I thought it would just be helpful to show kind of something I would do temperature wise to kind of protect myself, how I would go about runs and different temperatures, kind of what I do to kind of keep things kind of moving. So I'm warm and comfortable, but I'm also kind of supporting my performance and my athleticism at the same time, you know? That being said, um, you know, you really have to pay attention to your own body temperature and how you feel, and you really do need to be careful. So please, you know, if you're trying something I'm suggesting, but don't like not wear a shirt just because it's in whatever temperature range, because I said so, uh, and then like you get like hypothermia or something. Really pay attention to yourself, be careful, that's all. But I thought this would be kind of helpful uh, just to kind of share and uh, just give you like kind of some ideas and perspectives going forward. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time, bye.